Hello, Kitty. I've been interested in painting with an oil-based medium lately. The last time I used oil pastels were in primary school, and I don't recall why I even had them in my school bag. That was decades ago. Between oil paint and oil pastels, I thought the pastels would be more straightforward to try out. But I didn't have a clue which brand to get, so I looked up videos online with demonstrations and recommendations. But it just made me want to try them all, if I can get my hands on them. All of the videos I watched were clear about which brands they recommend based on what they were looking for in an oil pastel. They rated the brands based on how they preferred the tools to perform. If the brand performed in the way that they wanted it, they rated it highly. If the brand performed in a way they didn't like, they didn't recommend it. It all sounds very helpful to get anybody to start playing with a specific set of oil pastels. My problem is I don't have a clue on what I want from an oil pastel. And, oh no, 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 I take that back. What I want from an oil pastel is to be able to paint with it. That's what I want. But I don't have a preference on how I want an oil pastel to perform. In the videos that I watched, I usually hear people recommend a brand because it's got a creamy consistency, or because it blends well, or because it's both easy to blend and it's affordable. That information is really helpful, but it doesn't address my frame of mind. Because when it comes to experimenting with a new set of art tools, I realize I'm looking at this backwards. Let me explain. When you rate an art tool based on how you prefer them to perform, or based on how it lets you achieve the type of painting or the type of illustration you want to create, this is like the oil pastels are applying for a job that you're hiring them to do, because you know exactly what you want from them. You can rate them poorly if they don't live up to your expectations, and vice versa. After all, you paid for it. This is good if that is your frame of mind. I realize I'm looking at this backwards because I want to use oil pastels to be able to see how I can paint with it. I want to use oil pastels so that I can discover what types of paintings and what style of illustrations the oil pastels will allow me to do. You see the difference in that frame of mind, Kitty? I want the different oil pastels to teach me what it can and cannot do, so that I can apply them accordingly, where they can be useful. Now with this approach, the oil pastels aren't the ones applying for a job. It's not they who need to live up to my expectations. It's more like the oil pastels are the ones testing me to see if I can work with them. I am the student who is getting tested. I am the learner who needs a new lesson. It sort of feels like I'm taking an offer to enter a classroom to be an apprentice, wherein I have to learn to use the tools I've been given. Even though it sounds like a backwards approach in deciding which art tools to use, it's an approach I'm familiar with very much, because it's the same approach I've applied to other things, like things I was born with, or things that are part of my environment. Those things are outside of my control, and things that are outside of my control teach me how to cooperate, how to work around limitations, and even possibly turn those limitations into a feature. So this means I'm not here to make a review of art tools based on my preference. Instead, I'm going to try to understand its strengths and limitations so that I can make use of both. If you follow my backwards approach, Kitty, it almost seems like I'm more interested in the limitations. Because when I find limitations, the goal isn't to avoid or abandon using that art tool, but to adopt it into my technique. Oh, I know this sounds like it's all in my head, but this is why I recorded myself doing these sketches, so I can demonstrate what I mean. With this first round of tests, I tried recreating some oil paintings that I like. 
I thought that would be a good exercise to try to emulate the techniques used by that painter using his oil paints and see how close I can achieve the same look using oil pastels. So I got myself four different brands to start with. The first one you saw me using was the Sakura Cray Pass Expressionist Oil Pastels. It blends well, it's chunky, it's affordable, and the colors look nice and bright. But yeah, I was more interested in paying attention to its limitations. I noticed the chunky size was stopping me from getting too finicky with small details. The chunkiness of the pastel stick was teaching me to create an image with bold strokes and big geometric shapes. It was teaching me to be impressionistic. The second one I used were the Pentel Arts oil pastels. They're the cheapest ones I got. It's smaller in size, the pigment looks just as good as the expressionist, and the colors blend well. It just feels slightly firmer than the expressionist. And when I apply too many layers of pastels, it becomes gummy sooner, and flakes come off it jumping onto other areas of my sketch. The flakes were jumping and flying all over the place, but I just went along with it. I accepted its decision to mix with the other colors where I didn't really intend for them to mix. I would go ahead and smear them over that area where they happened to have landed, but sometimes I just left them there like fish out of water. It actually gives the illustration an interesting speckled look. It kind of reminds me of those paintings where paint is spattered onto the paper on purpose. When using oil pastels in general, any brand, I notice my pencil underdrawings can end up muddying the pastel colors once I start coloring over the graphite. So with this one you're seeing right now, I tried skipping the underdrawing. It's a simple sketch anyway. You know, I remember using this brand during my primary school days because I recall how easy it was for the wrapping paper to peel off the pastel stick. And at the time, I actually hated it because I didn't want to get my hands dirty. Which is fine if you're close to the sink and there's plenty of soap. Back then, the school restrooms mostly just provided running water. And sometimes, there was no water. But now I actually appreciate that the wrapping peels off very easily. I started undressing the sticks to allow me to color larger areas with fewer strokes. In this sketch, I was trying my best to come close to the same colors as the oil painting I was recreating. So that gave me an exercise on how to mix pigments to achieve a specific tint. When I looked up videos online of oil pastel blending techniques, I noticed they are mostly pertaining to creating smooth gradients. Try looking that up. Search for oil pastel painting on YouTube. And most of the thumbnails you'll see shows a lot of artworks that look nice and bright and smooth and clean, as if they were trying to achieve the same coloring effect as coloring with the computer software. And I thought that was quite odd. There wasn't an emphasis on color mixing, so the artworks I saw were mostly showing the exact same tints as you see the pastel sticks inside the box. Yeah, so that was odd, because I'd like to be able to create new colors by mixing pigments, just like you would when you mix paint on a mixing palette to create new colors. So that actually got me nervous about using oil pastels, because looking at those artworks online made it seem like I can't mix the sticks to create new tints. Of course that wasn't the case, as you can see. As soon as I tried layering and smearing two or more colors on top of each other, I ended up creating a new tint that doesn't look straight off the box. But unlike color mixing with paint, there's no need for a mixing palette with oil pastels. I can just go straight for it right there on the paper. The resulting mixture usually comes out better if I don't fully saturate the paper with a thick application of pastels too soon. Although, I quite like the effect when it starts getting buttery. 
But with some brands, I'm limited to just a few layers before it starts becoming gummy. And this particular brand I'm using right now is that type of oil pastel. It's the Mungyo student grade oil pastel. It's chunky, like the Sakura Cray Press Expressionist, but its consistency is a lot less buttery and more like rubber. So I understand why video reviews of this brand are mostly not recommending it. However, I'm still curious to learn how I can make use of its gumminess. I'm still curious to find out how I can appreciate its gumminess. So I just kept at it. I wasn't doing a good job of recreating the oil painting in this sketch, but the exercise was allowing me to get used to the physical properties of this brand of oil pastels. Since it was chunky in size, just like the Sakura Cray Pass Expressionist, the pastels were directing me to paint with big geometric shapes. So I gave it another go, with a different sketch that had bigger shapes, such as a portrait sketch. Unfortunately, I ran out of space in my memory card, so I didn't get to record my coloring process for this sketch. But here's the end result. You can see it's quite gummy, but I kind of like the dirty look. I don't know why. Somehow it adds character to my sketch, like it feels alive, and it looks unrecreatable, if there's such a word. Now, here we come to the last test of the day. I'm using the Mungyo Gallery series of oil pastels which is the brand that is mostly recommended online for its creamy consistency and its affordability. By now, I'm starting to get used to the physical properties of oil pastels, although I'm still far from perfecting its application. But now I have a few takeaway lessons to get me exploring this medium some more. I know now that I can definitely come up with a broad range of colors just by smearing colors on top of each other. Although with some brands, I have to be wary of how thickly I apply them before they start getting gummy, rubbery, and flaky. But even then, when that happens, it doesn't necessarily take away the appeal of the sketch. With this round of tests, I learned to just keep at it and accept the happy accidents, as Bob would say. I also learned that painting with oil pastels it's just like painting straight off the tube, minus the paintbrush and the fluidity. If I let the medium have its own way, if I let the medium's physical properties shine through, then I end up with a textured sketch and an impressionistic style of illustration. I end up creating a painting. It's just what I wanted. Except I achieved it by doing something I don't normally do. This is really what I love about trying new art tools. It's when I'm forced out of my comfort zone, when I'm forced to render an illustration in a totally different style than what I've been doing for so long. I know it sounds absurd, but it actually feels great to place myself in an uncomfortable situation. I mean, think about it. It's voluntary, and I'm not getting paid to do it. You know this, Kitty. Doing something that you didn't volunteer to do, or changing your style because someone has paid you to change your style, that's like losing your creative freedom, and it just eats at your soul. So the key thing that makes this exercise work is that nobody told me to do it. I just wanted to try it, even though I'm not really comfortable with it. If it ends up making me realize just how much I don't know, which it has done, that is precious, because there's a lot of things I don't know, and to be reminded of that inspires me to know better. It's like a lot of other things we do. We don't only do stuff because we know we're good at it. I mean, do you? I can't imagine anyone. Or maybe I'm just hanging out with the right people. I'm glad you're with me, Kitty. See you in the next lesson.